Liz earlier brought up the idea with the wealth tax that the wealthy can just escape the they'll just move their capital to escape the wealth tax. Uh, Piketty actually has a solution for that that he offers in his TED talk that I want to play a clip from for a second and then reflect on as we bring this to a close. What, what could be done? You know, the first thing is that, you know, I think we need more financial transparency. You know, we know too little about uh, global uh, wealth dynamics, so we need international transmission of bank information. We need a global registry of financial assets, more coordination on wealth taxation. And, you know, even wealth tax with a small tax rate will be a way to produce information so that then we can adapt our policies, uh, you know, to whatever we observe. And to some extent, you know, the fight against tax havens and automatic transmission of information is pushing us in this direction. Now, there are other ways to redistribute wealth, you know, which uh, uh, it can be tempting to use, you know, inflation, you know, it's much easier to print monies and to write a tax code. So, you know, that's very tempting, but sometimes you don't know what you do with the monies. It is a problem. Uh, expropriation, you know, is very tempting, you know, just when you feel some people get too wealthy, you just expropriate them. But this is not a very efficient way to organize the regulation of wealth dynamics. So uh, wars is an even less efficient way. So I tend to prefer progressive taxation. But of course, you know, history, history will invent its own pathways and it will probably involve a combination of all of this. Nothing is more scary than having this strange French man telling me that I need to fork over all of my financial information. No, just financial right. transparency, global coordination. Now uh, I believe those, in those one world government. For like right. total <laughs> global surveillance of every transaction. Yeah, no big deal. Yeah. We'll just print yeah. more money and also total global financial surveillance. What could go yeah. wrong? And it, he just like kind of hand waves this away as like, yeah, yeah, no, good idea, good idea. Yeah, no, the, it's this not. is where I like get really concerned because there's this still this looming specter of the CBDCs hanging it's over just... our heads. I think that that is uh, their preferred method of achieving this because once it's completely program, once you, every cent in your bank account is completely programmable and trackable by the central bank, then yeah, they can have complete financial transparency um, uh, around the world. And I, I think that this is something like libertarians need to be really uh, having our antennas up and um, ready to resist uh, best we can. Well, it's astounding. And note the circularity in his argument. He's basically taking it as an axiom. Inequality is a problem, but we don't know how much of a problem it is because we don't have full regulation of the world economy uh, we don't have right. uh, monitors of the entire banking system. Therefore, we need to enact all of these uh, global government type, type uh, tracking measures to see every transaction, every exchange that occurs to prove that inequality is a problem. Yeah. So, <laughs> it, it, it's totally, you know, where do you start on this? Uh, uh, every solution is just reaffirmation of a premise that he's begun with in the beginning. And what it basically means is the complete abolition of any sense of financial privacy, of, uh, of really any aspect of uh, free and open market exchange, because he wants to subject it all to the hand of regulators. Uh, it's, it's command and control me, economy. To me, this seems strikingly totalitarian. I mean, right? Like, what could possibly be um, more of a pathway to total control over what we do with our money and our time and and than a, trying to institute a system where governments uh, have total control over um, what our wealth looks like and where we can keep exactly. it. I mean, to me, this is the entire fundamental uh, selling proposition for Bitcoin. But I mean, what he's saying, it seems so innocuous. And in reality, I think it would be a path to, you know, extraordinary surveillance and ruin. Yeah. And we have to assume that government actors are not going to be these impartial neutral bureaucrats uh there are bad actors in government and any type of system of the type that he proposes would absolutely be abused would absolutely be used to go after political enemies uh to go after people that uh, are disliked by the current regime and he has no concern for that no care for it yeah. uh, i mean in fact this is a guy that like touted the soviet union as this uh, uh time of higher equality um, it, it's clear that he has a high tolerance for some very uh, awful totalitarian regimes that uh, I think most people would rightly recoil at. Hey, 
Thanks for watching that clip from our show, Just Asking Questions. You can watch another clip here or the full episode here. And please subscribe to Reason's YouTube channel and the Just Asking Questions podcast feed for notifications when we post new episodes every Thursday.